Hey, what's going on, nation? Today I'm going to show you guys how to not perform a dumbbell chest fly. A lot of people stay away from this exercise. There are videos online saying not to do this exercise because you can get injured, when in reality, the injury only occurs because you're not doing the exercise properly. And people don't want to tell you that. They just want to say, don't do this exercise. Or they want to title their videos, worst chest exercise, because it's clickbait and it gets views. Well, I'm not about that here, okay, guys? What I want to do is show you how to take the dumbbell chest fly and how to build the confidence you need to do the exercise properly and then actually progress with it as well. But before we get started, be sure to turn on video notifications so you never miss a new video upload from me. Now, first and foremost, guys, you have to stretch your shoulders. You have got to warm up the shoulder joint, okay? Cannot stress this enough. You guys should be warming up your shoulders before every single lift that you do. No matter what you're doing, even if you're doing squats, still need to warm up those shoulders because they're still being put in a position where they're compromised. So I don't care what warm up you do. This is one of my favorite warm ups. You guys see me do this all the time. I like to do shoulder breakers. It's a really easy way to go front to back and get those shoulders nice and warm. You can go down on the ground and do some dumbbell rotations if you want to. All right, you can get a straight pole, like a wooden pole or a PVC pipe, and do this as well. Whatever you have to do to get those shoulders nice and warm before you start this movement. Now, what we're gonna do first is go over what people normally do wrong, okay? And we're gonna talk about the reason why this actually happens. So the first thing that happens when this exercise is done incorrectly is this, okay? You see you get into position, and then they start off looking pretty good, palms facing in, and then as the weights go down, you start to see a lot of this. And this happens for a few different reasons. Number one, people think that they're actually bringing the weights over their chest just because they're not sure of where their hands are in relation to their chest. They don't realize they're bringing the weights over their shoulders versus over their chest when they do this. And number two, most people forget to pack their shoulders when they do a dumbbell fly. Majority of people will pack their shoulders when doing a dumbbell bench press or a barbell bench press, but they forget to pack them when doing this exercise. And what is shoulder packing? Shoulder packing is when you retract your scapula down and back. So it's almost like this, guys. I'll show you standing up. Shoulder packing. Retract your scapula down and back. And a really easy way to do this, and you see me talk about this multiple times, is that when you get into position, start in the front of the bench, lean back like this, and then slide back. And utilize that slide to help you pack your shoulders down and back. And then once you're in position, you can now do proper form with this movement, which is a slight bend in the elbows, coming down over your chest, and going down as low as you can like this, and coming back to the top of the position. Now I know some of you guys are gonna say, you're going too far down and you're gonna tear your shoulder. Well, if you pack your shoulders and you do this correctly, when you're down in this position as low as you can possibly go, you should not be feeling the tension in your shoulders. You should be feeling it throughout your chest and you can do the exercise safely. Now, if you still have a hard time with this movement and you still have a hard time feeling it in your chest, because you lack the mind-muscle connection, you lack the strength, or you, maybe you're still just not comfortable enough doing this movement, I'm gonna give you guys some options right now to help you get more comfortable so you can incorporate this exercise safely into your routine. The first option is to get down on the floor and do the movement here. Now, some benefits of doing this on the ground is that you won't have to worry about any sort of, uh, any sort of shoulder tear because what's gonna happen is, even if you lose control, the dumbbells are gonna stop right here. So you're not bringing your shoulder all the way back like I was just doing on the bench. The dumbbells stop, stop here, and if you need to, you can just take your hands out and then reset your position, and you're gonna be just fine. Also, if you're not used to doing this with heavier weights, this is a good opportunity for you to grab weights that are a bit heavier, keep that slight bend in your elbow, and practice the movement with the heavier weights going up and down. Now, you will still get a chest workout doing shoulder flies like this. You'll still get a hard contraction at the top. The main difference though between doing it on the floor 
and doing it on the bench is that you're not going to be able to maximize the stretch at the bottom of the movement, obviously because the floor is preventing that. But we're doing that for a reason, to protect the shoulders, to get your mind-muscle connection right, so you actually feel those chest fibers activating. Now, if you want to go back to the bench after doing it on the floor, but you're still not 100% comfortable with laying flat, what you guys are going to do is an incline dumbbell fly. And the reason why you're going to do an incline dumbbell fly versus doing it the flat version is because the majority of you, when doing this movement, because you're on an incline, you're going to instinctively bring those arms down over your chest. Now granted, you will still see some people who do this, although it's quite rare, it does happen, you still see this movement happening, but the majority of you are used to doing an incline dumbbell bench press with proper form, where your elbows are coming down like this, and you're pushing straight up, so you'll probably instinctively still come down to the sides of your chest like this, and not have to worry about ripping and tearing through your shoulder. So, once you get really good at the incline version of the dumbbell fly, you can then go to the flat version and get even more of a stretch on the chest in the bottom position. So, guys, just like with any exercise, of course, you can, you can nitpick any exercise in the gym and say it's dangerous. And I'll tell you what, the most dangerous exercise you can do where you see the most injuries is the barbell bench press. But I guarantee you, you're not going to see those videos go viral because everybody wants to do the barbell bench press. That's why people don't talk about really how dangerous it is and how bad it is for you and the compromised position it puts you in. That's why people get pec tears. But it is what it is. It's how the industry works. For this movement, totally safe to do if you know what you're doing and you do it right. And if you want to incorporate the dumbbell chest fly into your current training program, what I like to do is keep it either as a finisher movement or I like to superset it with my main lift. So if I'm doing a dumbbell bench press, sometimes I'll superset it with a dumbbell flat fly. And then if I go into my incline press, I'll superset my incline dumbbell bench press with an incline dumbbell fly and get a pretty solid workout in. So that's all it takes. So guys, if you enjoy the content, please show some love, smash that like button, Subscribe if you haven't already, and if there's other exercises you would like me to go over with you, show you the safe way to do them and how to progress with them, make sure you leave those comments down in that comment section below. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.